If you're wondering what does a data analyst do in 2023, I've got the answer for you. I've worked in the analytics space for over 15 years. I've worked as a data analyst. I've managed data analysts and data scientist teams, and I've networked and participated in different industry forums across many different companies and many different industries around the topic of analytics. So I've summarized what you can expect in the day-to-day -day of a data analyst role. I'm Jen, and I help demystify analytics and analytics analytics related careers. Like many jobs, data analyst responsibilities can vary widely from company to company. It can even vary pretty widely from role to role within the same company, especially when you start looking at larger organizations. There are some common threads that cross all the different types of roles you might encounter. So let's look at what those common themes are. We'll go through common day in the life activities as we explore an answer to the question, what does a data analyst do on a daily basis in 2023? The rough process a data analyst follows is going to be pretty similar role to role. They start out by understanding what the problem is or what the business needs to accomplish. They look at what sort of data they might need to answer this. They use a tool, whether that's a programming language or a no-code, low-code tool to be able to analyze that data and apply different mathematical statistical techniques throughout the process. And then they have to communicate that back to the organization so that someone can hopefully take action off of it. This entire analysis process may take just a few minutes, a few hours, days, or sometimes you'll work on the same problem for months on end. There can also often be multiple iterations of a problem for a data analyst. So what you're working on at any given time may be working on refining things that you've already done in the past, updating analysis that you've done in the past, or you might be looking at completely new challenges or completely new angles to similar challenges that you've looked at in the past. Data analyst roles show up in multiple different departments across organizations, pretty much agnostic of industry. So in these different roles, you might see titles like marketing data analyst, supply chain analyst, pricing analyst, or they might just have a generic data analyst title. Sometimes business analyst titles also are really what data analysts are doing. I'll link to a video explaining a bit about the difference and why there's such a nomenclature problem when people go to look for jobs. There's multiple schools of thought on the best way to structure data analyst team. The advantage of having these niche roles like a marketing data analyst or a supply chain data analyst or a pricing analyst is that ideally these people then develop subject matter knowledge. They become SMEs, subject matter experts on that specific topic. So they know more in depth how the business might use that data for let's say marketing and what the marketing team might be trying to accomplish. This lets them build expertise beyond the purely technical skills that they're bringing to the role. On the other hand, some companies like to implement more of a COE, a center of excellence or a center of expertise, where they centralize all of the analytics work that's going on within the organization to a core team where people just divide up the work as appropriate based on what the amount of workload is. The advantage of centralized teams is people get exposure to a variety of different topics at the same time, and the workload can also also be easier to manage as it might fluctuate from team to team depending on what the overall needs are and the size of different projects. Beyond these two, a lot of companies implement a hybrid of the two where you have expertise sitting within the business functions, but then you have teams that are more of the COE function. They're maybe a little more advanced. They might be working on more technical problems than others. Maybe they have more tenure in the company, more knowledge about a variety of practices in the company. A lot of times as a data analyst, you'll find yourself using the same data sets over and over, trying to answer new questions or look at things in new ways, maybe taking different subsets of those overall single data sets or multiple data sets that you're working with and splicing out different pieces of information that you want to study in more depth. Other times you might find yourself seeking out new data sources, new data sets to work with. As data availability continues to explode and grow exponentially, you'll also find yourself seeking out new data sets, new sources that you can utilize in existing analysis or new analysis that you're doing. This is especially true when we look at things like connected devices, whether that be your smartphone or really any product that has some amount of smart technology built in where there is a plethora of new information available frequently. Once you've identified the data that you might need to work with, you're going to spend some time cleaning it. Good data governance can help with the cleanliness of data to start with, but it's never going to 
to make everything 100% perfect. There's always going to be room for improvement and that's for a variety of reasons. It may need some cleaning and some improvement because it's just not collected in a good way. There's user error in the inputs, there's a lot of flexibility, but it could also be for very valid reasons. Maybe the way data is collected or the original purpose the data was collected for isn't what you're using it in terms of the analysis. So you might need to modify your data a little to fit the analysis that you're doing. Not to create new data or make massive changes to it, but just to, to change it, to organize it in a way that makes sense for the purpose that you're working with it. This can be a huge advantage in using data in new ways, but it also carries a lot of risk with it if you don't really truly understand what you're changing and how you're recategorizing compared to how that data was originally collected and what it was intended to be used for when it was collected. All of these different lenses and frames of reference make a big difference in what that final data may look like. Once the data is clean and ready to use, as a data analyst, you can finally get to the stage of analyzing the data, applying different statistical techniques to it to help understand it better and get to some answers around the problem or challenge that you're trying to understand. This stage is going to involve knowledge of one or multiple tools. At a very rudimentary level, you might be working some in Excel, and this is especially popular in smaller organizations where they might not have access to really big tools yet. But also the reality is most analysts spend some of their time in Excel. It's not the most glamorous of tools out there, but it's a very functional, effective tool when you're working with smaller amounts of data. As a data analyst, you may also work with a programming language. SQL is extremely popular, but other analysts use tools like Python, R, SAS, and there's a variety of other languages that are used in more niche ways as well. I mentioned you don't necessarily need to know how to code to become a data analyst. You may find yourself using a no-code or a low code tool. These look like tools such as data visualization tools, Power BI, Tableau, but there are also a lot of other low code or no code code optional tools on the market. Tools like Alteryx and SAS has a variety of tools that are in this space, this no code, low code space, where you can do a lot of analysis with more of an interactive drag and drop style of interface. But if you know how to code, you know some programming language, you can add that in to enhance the flexibility of what you're able to do in these tools. There's no one right choice of what skills to learn. There are ones that are more popular than others, but there is a place for all of these different things and different tools came about for different purposes. They're used in different industries for different specific types of analysis. Regardless though, you're going to need to know at least one of these tools and I'd encourage you focus on one tool before you try to build out your landscape of tools, the toolbox of different languages that you might know. Regardless of the tools that you've used and the analysis you've performed, there's one last step that you're going to have as part of your day-to-day -day work as a data analyst, and that's communication. At the simplest level, you need to communicate the findings of your analysis back to the person that requested them. This might be in the form of a dashboard, it might be in the form of a spreadsheet, an email, a report. Everybody works a little bit differently with these. Dashboards are are certainly much more popular than they used to be, especially interactive dashboards where people can access that information quickly. But there's times for one-off reports or more in-depth presentations that you might give. Also, different companies treat this differently. Some companies more favor the written report style versus just sending an email or a presentation. This is all going to vary. And sometimes your communication is going to be setting up a meeting, setting up some time to talk with the person that requested some data, some analysis from from you and explaining what your findings were, along with anything else that you think is meaningful that they know about the analysis you perform. Your communication skills don't need to be absolute top level. You're not typically going to be sitting in front of higher levels of the organization, though in some roles you can, and a lot of times this is very dependent on how much you lean into taking advantage of those opportunities or wanting to get into those sorts of positions. But regardless, you have to be able to communicate. And then I mentioned, 
then part of that day-to-day -day work is going to be iterating on it. Maybe you give that person what they asked for, but then they come back and say, oh, that's really helpful. Can you look at it this way? Or if we add in this other variable, what does it mean? So there's a lot of iterative work that may take place as part of the day-to-day -day work as a data analyst. These are the types of things a data analyst does on a daily basis. Check out my other videos for how to break into an analytics career. And if you want one-on-one -on -one help, check out the description below to find out about one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Thank you so much for watching.